Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <tuh> Wadu'a'a ilal huda Wadalalah alal khair Ibtidza'a wajillah Wa mardatihi wa qurbihi Wa thawabihi Subhanahu wa ta'ala Ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin Birahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma Inna nas'aduka la'alma Ladunni wal mashrib as-sufi Arhani wa habyagani Allahumma inna nas'aduka la'alma Ladunni wal mashrib as-sufi Arhani wa habyagani Allahumma in sadikal ilma ladani wa musrib as-sufi al-hani wa habiyagani Sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barihi wa salam Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Amin Alhamdulillah So alhamdulillah we have finished the battle of Khandaq And the battle of the trench Right and we I know basically at the end of the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the win I have a prayer to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made one of the uh, believers, um, one of the, the disbelievers a believer, right? And he foiled the entire plans of the disbelievers together with the Jews right? by a very smart uh, trick, right? That he played on them, right? And, and that completely foiled the plans, and, and, and now uh, the battle is uh, over, right? So just to reflect a little bit on the battle of Khandaq, right? That we see that, you know, the, dis- the disbelievers came, right, uh, to Medina marching. A hundred, uh, uh, ten thousand strong, right? Ten thousand strong uh, disbelievers, right? A huge army, right? Came, right? With Qatafa and the Quraysh and the and the uh, Bani Nadir, you know, of the Jews, they came marching to Medina, right? With uh, you know, where whereby where they, they 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 thought they were facing a sure win. Right, there was no doubt in their minds that they were definitely going to win this battle right, because they had all their grounds covered. Right. You come in with a kind of force, the kind of you know, uh, weapon, weaponry and the kind of uh, you know, armor and, and animals and whatever like, they had. You know, they, they were basically full force. It means that the disbelievers gave, what, gave whatever they had right, in this final strike to, to, to wipe out the believers. Right. And similarly, you know, and this is something that is not uh, unfamiliar. Right, in the history of Islam, right, especially when you go back back to the, uh, the previous prophets, right, you see, look at Nabi Ibrahim, alayhi salam, you know how they tied him to, to a catapult and they, they flung him into a huge fire. Right, and Nabi Musa, alayhi salam, right, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, brought him and the Bani Israel to the age of a sea. Right, and we feel around on, uh, at their heels, you know, uh, ch- ch- pursuing them, chasing them. Right, and I think that you know, when all odds are against them, Right, uh, and you know, and you seem as if you know it's it's it's, it's so bleak. You know, it does. There's no way that you know you could find yourself. You know, get out of this, right? But of course, at this point, we see the sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? That you know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala pushes the believers right to the very edge, right? and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sees what they do, right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala wants to know, you know, at that point, right? Will you call on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Right? Will you have your trust placed? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you know right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all plots and plans and all evil? Right? Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more powerful than whatever right, they can bring up? Whatever they do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above that. Right? And, and for the one right, who is able to do this, right, for the one who is able to, you know, uh, you know, to, to, to attach themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, you know, we mentioned the sound of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, Right, when he was on the catapult, Jibril appeared in front of him and said, Oh Ibrahim, do you have a need? And Nabi Ibrahim said, From you, no. <laughs> right, from you, I don't have any need. Uh, but, the, but, but me knowing that my Lord knows is enough for me. 
And my Lord knows what's going on and I have trust in my Lord and he knows what he's doing. Right? And Nabi Musa, alayhi said, when he reached the water's edge, right, and Fir'aun at their hills, and the army of Fir'aun at their hills, the Bani Israel said to, they said to him, see what he got into? Right? Had we stayed in, in, in Egypt, we have, we have been alive and now we are all dead. Right, in front of us is the sea, you know, we're going to die. In front of us is the sea and behind us is the, is the, is the, is the army. The Bani Israel showed no patience with Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Right, you know, despite seeing all the miracles that Nabi Musa showed, Ibn of Fir'aun, and you know, like all that Nabi Musa has done up to this point, right, they were still like, you know what, you see? You see, you know, like, like, because of your idea, lah, you know, like your bright idea to bring us all the way down, now we are, all, we are doomed. Right, but Nabi Musa very simply said to them, you know, for, for, for surely with me is my Lord. And I have no fear. <laughs> my Lord is with me. And that's how the believer is. Right, the believer does not, the believer does not fear. Right, when, when, when it comes to, when it, is, when it seems to be a dead end, he does not fear. When he feels, you know, completely engulfed and covered and he can't find a way out, he does not fear. Right, because there is no dead end if it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if that kind of attitude Right, uh, fire becomes cold and seas split. Right, that kind of attitude with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that kind of belief, that kind of tawakal, that's what Allah wants to see. Allah wants that. Right, so when you show that, the sea split. When you show that, right, the fire became cool. Allah says to the fire, be cold for Ibrahim, be cold and safe for Ibrahim. And Nabi Ibrahim said that was the best time of his life. Right, the 40 days that he sat in the fire, <laughs> the best time of his life he was in. Yeah, because the fire was huge. Yeah, do you know what kind of fire they built? <laughs> they built a, a fire so huge they couldn't even go near. They had to catapult him all the way in because they couldn't go near. It was too hot. <laughs> they could go and go and no, they could not go anywhere near the fire. And so they had to build a catapult and put him on a catapult and fling him all the way. You can even imagine Ibrahim, you know, flying to the air, <laughs> going to the fire, right? And he is like. In, like, you know, in his zen, he's calm and he's like, you know, he's completely cool. Like, do like what you want to do, you know, fly, fly. <laughs> you know, like, you know, he says, if my Lord knows what's going on. You know, I know what I'm doing. My Lord knows what he's doing. And Allah, and so Allah wants. Allah wants, Allah wants this steadfastness. Allah wants this, this firmness like, in the believer. Nothing shakes you. You're not scared. Like, why should you be scared if you're on the path? The only time you should be scared is when you sin. That's the only time you should be scared. Because you mean you're afraid that Allah leaves you. When you're afraid that Allah leaves you in your sin. Go be in your sin, you know, on your way to the hellfire. You know, that's the only time you should be scared. Right? Besides that, everything, Allah is above it. Allah is above it. You should never be scared when you're doing what Allah loves. Never. Right? So the, 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 the prophets were on this path, the ulama were on this path, you know, in Hadramaut, when the communists came right, and, over, and took over Hadramaut, Right, the ulama of that time, they had no fear. They couldn't care less. <laughs> you know, like, like okay, come on, threaten now, threaten. Right, they, they, could, they, they couldn't care. They went out, they spoke. Right, they spoke. You know, and, and they, they stood up for the truth. Right, so Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud and then other sahaba, they used to go out to the Kaaba and they would recite the Quran. They're not afraid. Right, they get beaten up, right, but they're not afraid. They're not afraid. Right, you know, because for them, you know, Allah is above this. Allah is above this. Right, so subhanAllah, so this is what we see in the Battle of Khandaq. Right, they're coming full force. Right, the believers did not shake. Right, they're not shaking. Right, they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind this. And if Allah allows enemy to win, Allah has a plan. Right, Allah has a plan. Allah says in the Quran that sometimes Allah allows them right, to, to, to kill some believers for Allah to take his martyrs. Right, put them in paradise. <laughs> right, that's what Allah wants to do. Give them a straight ticket into paradise. Right, and then those who, who are on the other end killing other people, then you know, Allah Allah was their fate, then was their end. Right, but of course there's a hadith so about some so some you know, was once he laughed and the sahaba say, you know, Ya Rasulullah, what's making you laugh? Then he said, you know, it, uh, you know, Allah laughs, you know, Allah laughs at two people. Right, one kills the other and they're both in paradise. Right? And then uh, and then the sahaba say, How could that be? Right, then he says, So this one kills this one while he was on disbelief. So this one becomes a martyr and goes to paradise. Then this one becomes uh, a Muslim and fights in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gets killed and he enters paradise. Right? So you know, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Do you understand why you <laughs> You need that. I just go, go too fast. <laughs> this one kills the other one uh, who's a Muslim. He's a non-Muslim. He's a Muslim. A is non-Muslim. B is the Muslim. 
A kills B, B goes to where I got B Shaheed. A becomes Muslim. Uh, and if A goes and fight in the way of Allah and then dies in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes to paradise. Right, so Allah laughs, you know, that you know that one kills the other and then uh, they both they're both in paradise, you know. Whereas there's another hadith whereby if two Muslims come together, uh, two Muslims they come together and they fight with their swords and one kills the other, they're both in the hellfire. Both. And and, and the sahaba say, Ya Rasulullah. We understand the one who killed to be in the hellfire. What about the one who was killed? How come he's in the hellfire? Right. And then he said that because he, you know, uh, had he, you know, because, you see, he was weaker <laughs> or a lousier fighter. Only by that, by, because he was intent to kill his companion. They were both intent to kill each other. But it's just that one of them was stronger and better at fighting. It doesn't mean that the, that the one who got killed is a better person you know, than the one who killed. They were both intent on killing each other. It just so happened that he's lousy in fighting. And that's why he got killed. <laughs> right? So it doesn't mean that this guy goes to hell and this guy goes to heaven. No, they were both intent on killing each other. Right? So even though he got killed because he had every intention to kill his brother, he also goes into fire. Right? So he died in that way. Right? In fact, uh, the one who got killed is in a worse situation because he died. At least the one who killed can repent. You know, so, so you know, in a sense, you look at that kind, that kind of you know, situation because they both, this is a hadith in the Salihin that uh, speaks about intentions. If someone goes out, you know, intends to kill someone else right, and he got killed, he killed on the intention he wants to kill someone else. He, killed, he, died, on the, he, he died on the intention. Right, and then he will be, he will be, uh, he will be um, held to account for his intention. Right? So the ulama do not count that, you know, if someone goes out with a bad intention, Right, and he was stopped in a way that is not his choice. Right, he gets uh, punished for it. He actually gets the retribution. Right, because he went out and it's not his choice uh, to stop. Right, but he was basically uh, stopped halfway, he had accident or whatsoever. He was still held to, be held to account right, for what he actually intended to do. I mean, he had every resolve to do what he wanted to do. Right, so the only time you actually get, re- you get rewarded for uh, not doing the evil you intended to do is when you repent in yourself and you pull yourself back right, from doing it. Right, so don't misunderstand. Right, so both of them in the fire. The hadith. So, hey, hadith. In, in the solution. <laughs> so, subhanAllah. So, anyway, going back to Nabi Ibrahim, sorry. Right, so, Nabi Ibrahim said, you know, uh, you know my, my, the, 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 the knowledge of my Lord about me is enough for me. Right, and Nabi Musa, you know, with me is my Lord. And he says, with me, my, right, not ma'ana. Because you all are like, you know, you gave up hope. Like, with me is my Lord. You know, and I just strike the sea and Allah speaks the sea. But this is what, what, you know, what firm belief, you know, unshaking, you know, unshakable, you know, steadfastness if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do to a person. Right? Strong. You know, you don't care what people think, what people say. You just do what you want to do. That's the matter. Right? You know, <laughs> like whatever, subhanAllah. Right, so so here and even Nabi Dawood alayhi salam when he went out there and and you know the the it was the army of uh, Talut you know it's it's over and over again throughout the history of Islam from Nabi Adam's time over and over again you will find and Allah was saying in the Quran how many times has a small group defeated a bigger group by the will of Allah subhanahu wa taala it's not about numbers. It's not about weaponry, it's not about strength, it's not about, you know, who has higher technology, it's not about any of that. It's all dunya to Allah, right? You know, in, Allah, in Allah's hand is everything, you know, Allah controls everything, right? So, so Nabi Dawood's story, when they went out to, to fight uh, Talud and the, and the army, went out to fight Jalud and the Goliath, right? And, and along the way, there was a river and Talud says, Allah will test you by this river. Whoever drinks of it, then he's not of me, he will have to stay behind. Right, and except for taking, you know, a sip from your, from your, from your hands like this, that's all you're allowed. But Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, they drank, they drank, and they drank, and they drank. Right, you know, majority of them drank from the river. Only very few took a sip and they went, went past, right? And then when they went, this small group band went past, they said, that's it. You know, some of them said, that's it. You know, today we will be destroyed by Jalut and his army. And there's a, there's a group of them that says, you know, uh, how many times a small group defeated a larger group by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So you see, this, 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 this group remind their peers, don't be afraid, right? This is Allah's hands, right? You know, don't think that Jalut is going to come and, and destroy us. If Allah sent us, He will make us win. But what, what do we have to do? We have to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you find 
uh, success and that was the, the very heavy lesson the Sahaba learned at Uhud. Right, they learned this very heavy lesson, right? It, for as long as you obey Rasulullah SAW, you will win. There's no doubt. Right? But the moment, the moment you disobey, even if it's by, you know, uh, basically uh, wrong judgment, you know, uh, misjudgment right, on their part, right, even then, you know, the, the moment that happens, everything falls apart. And it's Allah SWT giving them a very strong lesson. And, and, and Uhud never repeated itself with the Sahaba. Ever. You will not find it in the history. The Uhud never repeated. And they learned that one lesson, they learned it well. And they never, to the point that Khandaq, you know, when they were, they were digging the, the trench, to go to the toilet also, they were asked permission. Right, you know, everything they asked permission from Rasulullah SAW, they were so scared. And to do anything, they were upset Rasulullah SAW. Because you have the munafik, and they were, the, the munafik are the munafik lah, whatever, whatever they're doing. Right, so, so, you know, and, uh, and, and, and uh, so you must, so basically you must understand this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above everything. Right, and, and here, just like in every zaman, so from last time until now, right, so some people say, oh, in this zaman, there's so much falsity and so much, you know, uh, so much fitna and so much this and so much that, and, and you know, like, like, it's impossible to practice and bring up kids in this zaman, and, you know, like, you know, we can't, we can't do well, you know, we're so far behind, we're so this, we're so that, right, it's as if you would, people, these people forget that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is present in every zaman, you know, Allah, Allah is there, right? The one who created the time, He is present in the time. And He is present, you know, He is present in, at all times. He's present all the time. Right? He created whatever He created. Right? So in every, in every time, there will be a group of people who will stand up to this, to this effect. Every time. Right? So it's unbecoming of the believer to say, you know, oh, you know, we're doomed. Right, there's all this conspiracy and Illuminati and Zionists and, and Dajjalic forces and whatsoever. As if you forgot that our Prophet ﷺ give us guidance right, on how to get through the Zaman, the time. It's as if you, know, you get so scared and whatsoever. You know, I mean, how many people watch the arrivals and they got so scared and they're like, you know, it's, they're, they're, they're covering us from all, they're attacking us from all angles, there's no way out. You forget you have a God above this, this Illuminati. Right, they, they say, well, whatever lah, they can do whatever they want to do. Right, you know what you do? You read your kafi. <laughs> right? That's what you do. <laughs> right? You read surah muluk, you read surah yasin. Right, you do your istighfar, you do your salawat. Right, and you don't, you know what, you can have a full series and watch all the conspiracies in the world. will do nothing for you. If you're not doing your Quran, <laughs> you know, holding on to your sunnahs, like you're fooling yourself. Right, and you're not believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, some people they're so, so obsessed, right? And, and and they're like you know it's it's, it's all you know they, 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 we're all in this conspiracy and, and the food is all corrupt and then like the TV and the internet you know what they say we're being watched watch ah <laughs> watch ah I hope they're watching <laughs> you know like you know, oh they're hearing listening in to us listen now and talk I hope they're listening. And go and talk you know at least you change your ways and then you save your your, your hereafter. You know what? We have nothing to hide. Right? In fact, we want you to hear. Come here. <laughs> hear what we have to say. You know what our Prophet Tom has to say. Come here. Right? So, subhanAllah, people say, you know, all the kind of things in there, they're spying on your phone and what's never spy. Huh? What, what, do I, what, what are you so scared about? You know? Scared what? Right? We, we scared of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the one that we fear. Right? Allah's wrath. We fear that. Besides that, you know, Fir'aun, whatever. <laughs> you know, Nabi Musa had no fear of Fir'aun. No fear whatsoever. Rasulullah had no fear of Abu Jahl. Do whatever and do Abu Jahl. Whatever. You know, no one, no one is above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so then, actually, Habib was mentioning this, you know, at the beginning of, uh, the, before going into Khaybar. Right? He says, you know, this battle of Khandaq is a very strong lesson. We, remember we mentioned before we entered the battles? And people learn battles. They learn, they don't learn battles well. Right, because they see oh battles <laughs> like Ghazwa, 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 Ghazwa. <laughs> you know fighting 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 you know names so many names <laughs> and who fought with who and you know what happened and whatever. no it's not about that <laughs> you know battles lesson lesson in the in battles in in Badr what do we see strong tawakkul right what do we see that one of the biggest lesson in Badr right was Rasulullah Sallam consulting the Ansar it's one of the biggest lessons. Because the majority of the Muslims, he saw were Ansar. And they have no business in what is happening to them in the Quraysh. So you, there you see leadership. Right? He brought himself down, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, you see, look at this, this, this lesson. And, he's, and, and he asked, 
he consulted. He could just very well say, let's go out and fight. You know, but he asked. Right? So when you reflect on battles, you see very big lessons in battles. He said, you are the answer, you are the majority of us. What do you think? I want to know what you say. Right? And then, and then in, in every battle, we see one thing constant and how it really emphasizes. Qiyamulay. Praying in the night. Right? He said, you want to win? You want to win battles? Right? Stand in the night. I don't talk, don't talk to me about the hardware technology and, you know, and whatsoever you talk about. It is technology and, you know, like, you know, you have this aeroplane and, you know, like, it's mean bomb and whatsoever. And well, I don't know the stuff like, that they have, they have, you know. You can bomb all you want. Like, kaya mule na kaya mule. Like, so, so, you know, like, 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 so, so, and then, better, better. So, we went through so many lessons to apply in our time. You don't have to go in, into the battlefield to, to apply the lessons in, in the battle of Badr. The, the lessons are now, uh, in, your, in our time. Battle of Uhud, look at that. Oh, Battle of Uhud is a very strong lesson in your face. <laughs> right, don't you think you have any success in this life for as long as you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ever. Ever. Right, don't think that, oh, you're a successful doctor, businessman, whatsoever, and you disobey Allah and his prophet. Nothing. You have nothing. Right, I mean, this is strong, strong lessons. Even the Sahaba was tripped of victory at a, in, a, in a battle. Right, the moment they came down, the moment they came, they saw the calamity strike. And for them, they knew it was what they did. <laughs> they knew immediately. Right, so how, our time, you know, some people are so blind. They disobey Allah, disobey Allah, disobey Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And then they don't, they don't see that calamity is striking. They don't actually see. They see the life going well. They see everything going well. The calamity is that it's going well. That's the calamity. Because you're not waking up. You see, oh, I have, my business is going well. I'm still healthy. My family is you know, fine. They're healthy. They're happy. And we're all committing sin. And we're all fine. That's the calamity. Right? That you're, not being, you're not waking up right, to the truth of reality. And then you know, when death comes, that's the worst calamity. <laughs> You die in that state, you know, of not praying, not fasting, not covering up. You die like that, and then you know. So, right, so as well, we learn battles. You know, learn the lessons of each, of every battle, right? And so, so Allah is above everything, and and we basically believers, right? We must understand this, right? And and here Habib, Habib also mentions that you know when you, and he so I actually posted on my Instagram, my Facebook, you should notice, but I didn't translate it. <laughs> I was going to, that I didn't. <laughs> I forgot. I did post it. And I gave some enough that I didn't trust him. <laughs> right, so anyway, he was saying that, you know, and he was, he kept, he would keep, he would keep doing this, right? He would say, you know, you come here and you listen to this over and over again, right? How many times we have written Sira? You know, he was speaking to the people in, in Hadramaut, right? And he was saying that the whole entire thing is not for you to sit for, sit for, 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 for majlis after majlis after majlis after majlis after majlis, and you know, you just, just hear and it goes through you, it bounces off, you go back to your work, you go back to your life, and it doesn't change you in any way. That's not the point. Right? The point is that it changes your inside. Right? You are getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are teaching yourself right, what it is to be a believer. What's the meaning, what's the meaning of being a believer? Right? And he says that you know, it, is, it is you know, the health of a person's heart. This is a gem that he said. Right? The health of a person's heart right, is in accordance to his attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? That's how you see Right, so the moment you know you in any part of your life, if you are not running to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and Rasul or something, it shows you have a very sick heart, very sick heart. Right, and and this can can afflict anybody, whether they are the common person or a teacher, ustad, sheikh, doesn't matter. Right, you know, it's a matter of the heart. Like many people, they run the other way away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, even worse. Right, you know how many people you know if you I I, I have met. Subhanallah, you know, they can be teaching the religion, right? But, you know, when you, know, when you look in their personal life, right? All they do is turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's a calamity. Right? When they are in distress, it's not, it's not, you know, I call out to Allah. It's not, you know, I'm going to read my yasins. It's not, I'm going to do my Quran. It's not, I'm going to do fasting three days for a hajat. You know, they, 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 they say, you know, what can I do physically? You know, what can I do? And, and you, of course, you do your, 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 your effort. Right, but you need to put in all of these other things because you must know that the the, the, the ultimate uh, willer, right, the, the one who ultimately wills, you know, or does, is God, and that's how Rasulullah is teaching us in Bittul Khandaq. They they built the the trench, they built the trench, 
right? But but you know he 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 prayed in the night. He begged Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, they place a trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, Allah stripped them, you know, even of the effort and they dug a trench. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave gave a way through. You know, Allah, Allah, who allowed it? Allah, Allah allowed it for for the disbelievers to come through the Jews, right, and come through. You know, Allah opened that door. Who opened that door? Allah opened that door. You know, Allah allowed that to happen. Right, so now the Muslims, so what they have done for two for for a, for a full week of digging the trench, you know, now is this like like it's like he's come to a point where it's useless. Because they went to the Jews, <laughs> right? You know, and then what did Allah do? Allah caused one person to be a believer. <laughs> you know, I mean, whose who's hand? It's all of this. But Allah wants to see them dig the trench. Allah wants that. Of course, you can see that at the end of the day, the trench didn't do anything. At the end of the day, you can think about it, right? It didn't do anything. Right? Because they actually found a way through. <laughs> right? And they were actually holding the Muslims. Uh, uh, in, in, uh, they, was, they replaced the Muslims in siege, right? And... The Muslims were starving. Right? It was a very severe war. Right? So, I mean, subhanAllah, Allah sent a wind. Go on, go, run over, go home, go home. Right? And subhanAllah, but Allah wants, Allah could send the wind from the beginning. You know, Allah waited. You know, Allah allowed them to go through this entire situation for how many, you know, about uh, more than a month they went through this. Because Allah wants to raise their level. And Allah wants to give reward. And Allah wants to forgive sins. Because it's not about this world, it's about the next world. So when calamity afflicts you, say Alhamdulillah, right? Allah wants to forgive your sin. Allah wants to raise your levels in paradise. Allah wants to reward, right? You know, Allah can remove the calamity like that. You know, but Allah wants you to call on Him. Allah knows by giving you this, you wake up in the night. Allah knows that. <laughs> Without this, you won't wake up. <laughs> you know, when things are all well, you forget Allah. Allah's mercy, Allah sent calamities right, to us. You know, it's by His mercy. You know, so we learn that. And here, you know, uh, and you may look at the at the prophets. You know what they say when the impossible came, right? They say, oh, "With us is our Lord, right? Uh, her ma'il, in the ma'il Rabbi. With me is my Lord." And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, and Allah has will never change no matter what time He's in. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Ali Imran, "Qulillahumma malik al mulk." Right, oh, uh, and say, O oh Allah, right, the king of the king of, of the kingdom. Right, so Allah says, O oh Allah, the king, we say, Allah says, say, O oh Allah, the king of the kingdoms. Right, uh, you give your kingdom to whomsoever you want, and, and you take it away from whomsoever you want. Right, uh, you give honor to whomsoever you want, and you debase whomsoever you want. Right, uh, in in your hands is everything. Right, you give life to death, and you give death to life. Right, and uh, and and you bring the night into day and day to night. Right, and you are. Right, you do whatever you want right, without you know, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one can, can, can question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is a verse that is, that is uh, encouraged to read every night before you sleep right, it's in Surah Ali Imran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in the Quran right, uh, وَكَأَيِّمْ مِنْ نَبِيٍ قُتِلَ مَعَهُ رَبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرٌ فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَمَا ضَعُفُوا وَمَا اسْتَكَانُوا right, So he says, and, and, for, and is there any prophet, right, you know, who has been killed, uh, who, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, that, 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 that a group of people, you know, went to, uh, that, that, they, that they were fought in the way of Allah subhanahu they were killed in the way of Allah subhanahu and they didn't become, you know, weak, right, by what has afflicted them. Right, they didn't become and they didn't, they didn't stray away from what has afflicted, but rather they they held they held, they held uh, fast to the path of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. And Allah subhanahu wa taala said that Allah loves those who are righteous. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, "Wa ma kana qawluhum illa an qalu." And their words were nothing except that they said, "Rabbana ghfir lana zunubana." 
واصرف واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين Right, and they said, so the only thing they actually, actually say in asking for Allah's help is, Oh, our Lord, forgive our sins. Right, and forgive, you know, what we have, uh, you know, transgressed in our affair. And make firm our feet, right, and help us against the disbelievers. Because they understand that if anything can cause your downfall, you know, or, your, or you losing the battle, or using whatever it is in life that you're going through, it is your sins. Right. So from the beginning, when they ask Allah about to go, they them go through a calamity, they say, "Oh, our Lord, forgive our sin." Right? Because you forgive our sins, then you will bring us over our calamity. Right? So I don't know. Allah teaches us in the Quran, you know, what is calamity about? Right? Seek that, right? and then make our feet firm on your path. Don't let us stray away from 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 what is from the truth, right? and help us on, uh, against the disbelievers. Right? So you know, and and this is the and this this is the. Um, the attach this this verse shows the attachment of the heart to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is basically the the uh, the, the the concern of the heart, and right? the concern of the heart is the sins that's plaguing right? a person's heart, right? And whatever is blinding him from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? If you focus on these two things, you know nothing else is a, is a matter to you, right? Nothing else. Just these two things, you know, what is blinding you? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what you keep doing, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he hates. And right? be on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Right, so alhamdulillah. Right, we're gonna continue. We are on page 90, right? Ghazwa. So we're going to go into the battle of Khaybar. Right? Uh Khaybar, right, is basically you will see the Ghazwa of Bayli Quraida. Right. So basically it is uh, also called Khaybar, right? Because uh, that's where they live. <laughs> right. So so you're gonna go we're gonna go into the battle. Hmm? The Jews. Huh? The Quraiza, the ones who betrayed. Yeah, but in the, the the town the place. It's not they're not, they're not in Medina town. They are outside. Right, so actually they they are like on the outskirts. Huh? They have different names everywhere. Yeah, there are different names everywhere, basically. <laughs> right, so it, uh, it's not like the entire... Medina is very small. Medina is the size of the mosque today. That's how small Medina is. This is all the way out. Right, so, and so, so this is all the way out. So, so that's why, you know, it takes... It took them a few hours to get there. Right, it took them a few hours to get there. Don't be surprised by yourself. From Medina to Haifa. <laughs> Medina is a small town. Right. Okay? It's big, okay? Like if you if you go to Medina and they bring you to the trench, you actually take a taxi. Do you know that? You can't walk from Medina Bawi to the trench. You can't. Do you go there? I, no, I, I don't know. Your where sister seems to know. <laughs> but you took you take a taxi out. You actually can't walk there. It is it's way out. <laughs> right. So that's why I, I, I do the, the the map the time. We say Medina here, mountain, mountain, mountain. <laughs> right. And then there's like this farmland and then I was like and then the, the trench is in one corner. Right? And the other side is the is the the fortresses of the Jews. I mean it's really far. Right, yes. Is it the around all the masjid that you Yes. <laughs> but it just seems to be yeah, you, 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 okay, if you go to Medina, they will say, Hada Khandak. Maybe they say, Khandak, 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 and you're like, what is Khandak? <laughs> right, it's called Masjid Khandak, you know, the, the Masjid of the Trench. And in fact, in the Trench area, there were a few Masjids. Right? Uh, but they, 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 they demolished it, whatever they did. Lah. Right, but anyway, right, so now, you see that the battle has ended. Right? There's still unfinished business, right? which is the juice. Right, they can't betray in that, that kind of vicious way, right? Because what they did was really, you know, you don't overlook this kind of betrayal, right? So what they have done, right, is is treason, in the time of war, right? No country, back then and even up till today, will stand for this. You know, no country will allow this to happen and then just close one eye, ever, right? If in any country someone, you know, played treason, you know, or someone betrayed. In the time of wars, in such a way that it could cost, 
you know, the country's uh, uh, success in the war, you know, or victory in the war, right, or cost a lot of lives in the country, and if that person is found out, it's death, it's, it's, it's death. Without hesitation, it is death. Right? Or if that group of people are found out, execution. Right? Up to today, right, in all countries, all countries across the board, right, the, if, if someone is found to betray the state in that way, in the time of war, right, it's a sentence. Death sentence. So now Bani Quraiza, they are in a serious situation. And they know, they know that in the city, they, they, they know they, they, they have no escape right now. Right? Because their, their friends have run away, which they, which they thought was going to happen, they happened anyway. We ran, ran away. And now the Muslims are marching. Right? So we're going to read the story, right? So the Jews of Bani Quraiza bo- broke the covenant and plotted with the Ahzab to which war against the Prophet. Later, they held back from fighting as a result of Nu'ayim bin Mas'ud sowing discord between them and the Ahzab. The Ahzab basically the Comrades, the disbelievers who came as a group. Right. Thus, it was that the Prophet وسلم, needed to deal with those who had betrayed him and whose existence in Medina had become a threat to the safety of the Muslim and their security. Right. So now it's a matter of state, really. Right, so they, 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 they actually had a, an agreement with Rasulullah so when first came to Medina. So you see, Rasulullah did not force anybody to become Muslim. Right, so anyone, because you want to see here, right, that's all you want to read through, right, that he actually gave them a, 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 an option to actually be Muslim right, and they won't be executed. Right, so people might say, oh, you look, see, see, he forced them to be Muslim. No, when he came in, he gave them a choice, stay Jew, right, but have a covenant with me because we're going to be the state. Right, so if you're gonna live within our within our boundaries, you know, and be on our on basically in the boundaries of, of, of the state, right, then you have to be on our side, right? And they signed the the back the 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 the, the, uh, the treaty, right, the allegiance with the Muslims, right, and they agreed to be on the side of the Muslims, right? And and also let them live uh, peacefully. All three tribes of Jews they were allowed from the very beginning to to live peacefully next to the Muslims. They were not forced to be Muslim at all, even though their book. Right, tells them that when the Prophet comes, right, then be in his aid. Right, in, and Allah says in the Quran, that Allah has commanded all of you. You know, you know that when you meet the last Prophet, you have been commanded from Nabi Musa's time. When the last Prophet comes, you are to help him. And you are to be in his aid. And you are to fight with him. And not fight against him. Right, so what they have done is even, it's against their book. And so if they were true to their book, so Allah subhanahu wa keeps saying in, in the Quran, oh those who are given the book, oh those who are given, oh people of the book. I over it because Allah is saying you have the book. And if you claim to be true to your book, you should have believed in this book from the very beginning. Right? So so, so, so so you see, right, so now they have betrayed. Like the other Jews, they have also betrayed. But their betrayal is worse. Right? They were worse in the first two. But in the kind of heart, basically they, they they messed around with the Muslims, right? And they showed uh, hostility, so they were banished. Right? Bani uh, Nadir, right? they plotted to assassinate Rasulullah They were going to throw stone on him. Right? So when he was found out, they were banished also. These people, they plotted with these believers right? so, uh, to allow a backdoor entrance into uh, Medina. Right? So, so they have become a, a real threat. And there's no more covenant. Done. Right? You are betrayed one time, done. You know, there's no... There's no you know, the only thing about is that you become Muslim. <laughs> there is no way around this. Right? They have betrayed, they have betrayed. So on the day Rasulullah and his companions returned from the Ghazwa of Khandak, from the Battle of Khandak, Battle of the Trench, and set down their arms, right? Jibreel alayhi salam, appeared at, at noon wearing a raw silk turban, the end of which hung between his shoulders. He rode a mule on a saddle of leather and, and, and a cushion of silk, and in a narration upon a horse, uh, in full armor and dust still upon its teeth. Right? So basically, Sayyidina Aisha she narrates this hadith. You will see it later on, we read through. And Sayyidina Aisha said, Rasulullah came back from the battle right? and he was very tired because they've been out there for about more than a month. Right? They've been out there. So the first time they actually went back to Medina town. Right? And they went to. Uh, so, so, so he came into the house of Sayyidina Aisha. So first he went to Sayyidina Fatima Zahra as, he, as his uh, norm. And whenever he would come back from anywhere, the first person he will go and see is his daughter, radiallahu anha, wa ardaha. And after seeing her, and then he will pay to the masjid and he will go and see Sayyidina Fatima Zahra. Then he will go to his uh, wives, right? So he will not prefer his, uh, his wives over his daughter. Right? Then he went to Sayyidina Fatima Zahra. Then he took off his armor right? and took off his, 
uh, clothing and then he went to take a shower right? because they've been on air battle for the past few months they've not been showering right so this one, now they, they go and take a shower you're, you're, on, you're on battle right, right? you're on battle then it's a situation like that right so so when he was there he heard a sound right, in the masjid right outside his room right and he uh, so he he rushed out right put on his clothes he rushed out right and he saw uh al qalbi right Dehi al qalbi is basically a sahabi right uh, who was very good looking and jibril alayhi salam would always come in his form right so people would think that it's Dehi al qalbi but it's not him right? it's actually jibril <laughs> it's actually the jibril alayhi salam right so Rasul went out there and jibril said have you put down your arms o messenger of allah right so so he says Rasul had just bathed so jibril said have you put down your arms here rasulullah and he said, yes. And Jibril said, may Allah forgive you by God. We, the angels, have not put down our arms since the enemy arrived and we have just returned from pursuing them until Hamra al-Asad. Right? God, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders you, O Muhammad, to march on to Bani Quraiza. And I am going to them with the angels who are with me in order to shake their forts, right? their fortresses. Right? Therefore, depart with the people. Right, so that so Sayyidina Jibril came and said, you know, we you have you put on your arms. We the angels have not. Because we have unfinished business. Right, we're gonna march now to Bani Quraida. Right, we're not gonna stop until we get there and we lay siege. Right, and they will give up. The Bani Quraida they will give up. Right, and so Rasulullah Islam said, you know, my companions are weary. If you would allow them a few days, right? And Jibril said, Rise and fasten your arms upon you, for by God I will break them as an egg is broken right, on a smooth rock, and I will enter their forts with this horse of mine, so that I demolish them, nor will I leave until they are open to you. And right, Jibril departed with the angels who were with him, and thus rose in the alley of Bani uh, Ghanm of the Ansar. Right, so some tried to find, you know, get a bit of rest. <laughs> you know, we just finished our battle. Get a bit of rest before we go ahead. Uh, but Jibri said, no, now, now. Right, Allah says, now, go now. Right, so, they, so he went out, Rasul went out, right, and he uh, gave the order. Right, uh, I will read through the thing. Right, because he gave the order to the, the Sahaba, you know, let none of you pay, pay answer until you reach Bani Quraidah, you know, at Khaybar. Right, that is where you have the hadith, you know, about when Rasulullah said, you know, none of you should pray Asr until you reach there. And while the Sahaba were marching, right, Asr was about to go out of time. Right? So some of them, you know, they stopped and prayed Asr. And some of them said, no, Rasulullah said, we cannot pray Asr until we actually reach Bani Qurayza. So some of them stopped and, they said, and some of them said, no, he only said that to make us hurry. And that's why he said it, to make us hurry. Right? But it's going to run out of time. We're going to reach there by Maghrib, right? So we better pray Asr now. Right, and then so there was a, there was a disagreement of opinion between the Sahaba of his word or some said. So some of them prayed answer, and some of them they reached there at Maghrib and they prayed answer there, right, during Maghrib time. And thereafter, when they came to Rasulullah SAW and they asked yeah, Rasulullah, uh, uh, this happened between us, and uh, Rasulullah said, "You are both correct. Right, both interpretations were correct. Right, you know, one interpreted that what he said to mean hurry up." Right, but if you're gonna run out of time, pray answer now. Right, but they are not interpreted that no, he meant pray there. That means by his commandment, we can't pray Asar you know, until we reach there. That means our Asar is not Sah until we reach there <laughs> because he commanded us as such. Right? So, so they had a different opinion. And that is how the, 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 the ulama, and there is one incident whereby the ulama would always quote right, uh, that you know, sometimes you have different opinion amongst the scholars because of these kind of statements. Right? Whereby you know, some people take it as this and some people take it as that. And also say both are correct. And that's why you can have Imam Shafi'i, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Imam, Imam Malik, right? Uh, they have different of opinions, but it's only slight differences. Yeah, but it's because, because ba- it's based on what the Prophet said, right? That could have been interpreted in two ways. And some Sahaba did this way, and some Sahaba did that way, right? And they are both correct. Uh, some allowed both, uh, 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 allowed both in this time. So Sayyidina, I'm going to read through. Sayyidina Aisha said, Rasulullah was with me and he heard the sound of a loud jump. So he, 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 started, uh, so he started and leapt out uh, with me in his wig. Uh, so he went out and, he, and I found a, a man on a horse and Rasulullah leaning against the horse's mane, speaking to him. So I returned. When Rasulullah returned, I asked him, you jumped very high and then you left. So when I went to see, I found that it was Dihya Al-Kalbi. And he said, do you see him? And he said, I said, yes. And he said, that was Jibril. It wasn't Dehi Al-Kalbi, it was Jibril. Like, huh? They were seen as that Sahabi. But it's not him. <laughs> and, yeah, but he knows that it's Jibril. 
he was, so all the other Sahaba will see him in the in the mosque thinking that he's there. Right. And they not, it's not there. <laughs> they are at home. <laughs> Right, so, they, so they, everyone knows this this Sahabi named Deha Al Kalbi. Right, so everyone thinks it's him that came to the mosque by Jibril. <laughs> like he's, you know, he, he, I don't know whether Allah Allah made they ever come a situation where you know Jibril appeared and he's there. <laughs> yeah, today. <laughs> yeah, and like, eh, he look like me. <laughs> right, but Jibril tend tend to uh, he he takes that uh, that form. Right, the Hiyat Kalbi's form because he was a very handsome man. Right, so, so Jibril tend to always, no, it's not always, but he tend to prefer that form. <laughs> right, maybe he saw the Hiyat and said, I like that, <laughs> this face. <laughs> that was going to be him from now on. <laughs> Allahu Alam, you know, whatever Jibril wants to do, he can do. Right, so he says that was Jibril commanding me to go out to Bani Qurayza. Dehya radiallahu resembled Jibril in his beard, face, and age. Right. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called a call to call to the people. Whoever hears and is obedient, let him not pray Asar, but at Bani Quraidah, let me Khaybar. I pray at, pray at Khaybar. I'm not so sure why <laughs> this book the entire time they didn't use the word Khaybar at all. They use the word Bani Quraidah, Bani Quraidah, Bani Quraidah. Right, because as far as I know, it's Khaybar. So I was like, come, they don't use the word Khaybar. <laughs> because when I learn, you know, I, I, they will always say Khaybar, Khaybar, Khaybar. Right, even Habib, you know, he will always say Khaybar. Right, but for some reason they just they just keep calling it Bani Quraiza. Hmm. Right, so Allah Alam. Right, so so the Prophet put the, he put his armor, he went forth on his bareback donkey called Yafur. See we have one name of some animals. We must memorize the names of his animals. So Yafur, Qaswa, right, uh, he has a cat named uh Mu'izza. Right, so he has he has a name of his animals. <laughs> Yafur is his donkey. Right, Yafur said story that after some passed away, Yafur jumped into the he killed himself. They couldn't take it. They couldn't, the, the animals of Rasulullah they couldn't take his death. Right? Uh, Qaswa uh, knocked her head against the uh, uh, the, the camel. Uh, she knocked her head against uh, the, the the rock until she died. Right, so the the ah uh? <coughs> I don't know what more is. <laughs> these these cats, right? What they do? <laughs> right, well, basically, like the animals of Rasulullah they they couldn't bear his death. They couldn't bear. Right, so when he passed away, they want to die. Now to them, there's like to them, they were only alive to serve Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he is, when he was gone, they had no reason to live, and they're animals, you know. So they, they like all of them, they killed themselves. Some well, most of them, they killed themselves. You know, they don't want to live thereafter, right? So Yafur, you know, I said I see his name and you feel a <laughs> sadness, right? That he actually, but that's how they were. They, for them, for them, like to die is better than to live without the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, so that he, he actually jumped down over if I'm not wrong, right, to kill himself. Right, and in a narration, right, on a donkey whose bridle was a rope of fiber and whose saddle was made of fiber, he put Ibn Umm Maktoum in Church of Medina. Right, give, Ibn Umm Maktoum is the one that is spoken about in Surah Abasa. Right, in Surah Abasa, you know, Allah SWT says, you know, he frowned and turned away. Right, the Prophet SAW frowned and turned away when Ibn, uh, Ibn Umm Maktoum came to ask some questions. He was blind. Right, and he is the one that will always be placed in Jajar Medina whenever the Muslims had to go out and fight. Because he was blind, he was excused from jihad. Right, so he was always, he was the Mu'azzin, you know, and he would be in Jajar Medina. Any affairs would go back to him. Right, uh, Ibn Um uh, Maktum. Right, uh, and he gave the Roya. The Roya is the flag. Right, they always have a flag. Right, they will, they will hold to show that, you know, they, they, are, they are well and fighting. To Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, and place him in front of him towards Bani Quraida. Right, so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed through a Sawrain when he before he reached Bani Quraiza and asked its residents, did anyone come through here? They said, Ya Rasulullah, Dehya bin Khalifa al Kalbi passed on a white mule. We were six we were six saddle, they want this is Dehya. <laughs> no, no, he, the, the other angels were with him, but they were all invisible. Right? But they only saw Jibril running through. Right? And Rasulullah said that was Jibril. Right, sent to Bani Qurayza to shake their thoughts and cast fear into their hearts. So as we mentioned, the angels are not allowed to kill before the believers actually come. So so, 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 so Jibril went through something, you all have to go now. Because we can't do anything until you all come. <laughs> so you believers have to come, you know, then, then we can do stuff. Right, so the angels, their, their job was basically to, you know, to, to cast fear right, in, the, in, the, in the hearts of the, of the Jews. Right, so they will surrender. Right, and they began to, you know, shake the fortresses, you know, to the, the, make the literally make the walls shake. I right, said so even more they were, just, you know, we don't play with this. 
don't believe the Prophet sallallahu he is you know, he is on the side of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Now you don't you don't fight the one you know by God is on his side. <laughs> and subhanallah, you know uh, there's this you know there's this poem that Sheikh Hamza wrote, you know about spring's gift. No, it's a very uh, very very uh, famous po- uh, poem by Sheikh Hamza, and there's a, there's a famous there's a, there's a beautiful part, you know, whereby you know like I envy those who saw the changing of the tide, you know, the, the, the one who has God on his side, right? Allah, and so the changing of the tide meaning like seeing you know how you know this entire is is history, it's really is history in the making, right? it's a great event, and right? the, those who were there who saw. What was going on, you know, in twenty three years? Like Mr. has ten, you know, in twenty three years, right, from a society or entire peninsula plagued with, you know, all kinds of superstitious beliefs and tribal warfare. Right, back and forth, you know, and worshipping of iron and all kind of nonsense and whereby the powerful uh, rule and the weak are oppressed. You know, they saw this entire like terrible situation of the Arabs. Right, to become the most refined of human beings ever to walk on the face of this earth. Right, if, if we read a spell of 23 years, you know, remember that, 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 that line that you know, Shia Hamza wrote, right, you know, those, those who saw the changing of the turning of the tide, I know, subhanAllah, like, they were always, it makes your hair stand, you know, like just to see this happen in front of their eyes, right, and to see Islam sweep. Through the lands, you know, Imam Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, you know, when he compares himself, you know, in Mecca, seeing the small band of believers, and to when he was Khalifa and Islam spread, right, to Syria, to Africa, to, you know, to, to, to as far as China, Sayyidina Osman, he ruled as a Khalifa for, how many, for 13 years, Sayyidina Osman, 13 years. Sayyidina Bukha, 3 years, Sayyidina Omar, 10 years, Sayyidina Omar, 13 years. And Sayyidina Osman saw the, the already, you know, Islam sweeping. And he saw like, what happened in Khaybar when Islam said, you know, that, that you know, uh, Sham is ours, Persia is ours, Yemen is ours. And they are living and seeing this. <laughs> right, you know, they remember what happened in the Khaybar, you know, what the Prophet said. And they're seeing this. You know, and then, you know, and then later on, Hussein and Hassan, when they were told, you'll be martyred, you'll be martyred, you'll be martyred. And they saw it. They are told Sayyidina Osman will be martyred and they saw it. Right, you know, the prophecy is unfolding. Right, you know, can you imagine what, okay, what, what it does to a person's heart by right, seeing all of these things happen? Right. So he says here, you know, so subhanAllah, they, they, so he cast fear into the hearts. So when Sayyidina Ali reached the forts of Bani Quraidah right, with a group of the Muhajireen and Ansar and fixed the royal right, in the ground at the base of the fort, he heard an ugly comment about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wife. So, and he didn't say what it was, but they just basically um, narrate that he heard something that was distasteful. And he said, yeah, so I heard something that was distasteful about you and your wives. And the Muslims were quiet at first, but then answered, the sword is between us. And Ali radiallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, leaving Abu Qatada al-Harith bin Rabi'ah in charge of the raya, he met them on the way there and said, yeah, Rasulullah, why not stay away from these crude people? And he said, why? It seems that you have heard something harmful concerning me. And Zainal Ali said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, go forth, for were the enemies of God to see me, they would say nothing of that. Right? So I mean, he heard basically from the Jews, lah, what they were saying. And Zainal Ali was, was like, you know, like, he doesn't want to mm-hmm. hear all this kind of stuff from these people who would insult him. Right? So and Rasul said, you know what? When the moment they see me, they would shiver <laughs> in fear. They wouldn't say it's kind of, that's what they, that's what they are. I did, you know, behind Rasulullah's back, they, they say all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, foul, foul words and words about Rasulullah. And this is something that even believers have, right? They say foul things about people behind their back, right? And this is the, the, this is the, the characteristic of these people that we see here, Bani Qurayza. And then in front of them, they get scared, afraid, <laughs> right? Whereas the true believer is the one who is truthful all the time. Right? You don't actually go into foul speech, you know, what kind of, you know, what kind of, uh, uh, Trait is that, you know, and if, and the believer does not even say words that are beneath them, you know, in in in, in a way, you know, that I, like, I mean, it makes your hair stand, you know, when sometimes you see, like someone who's so, uh, like so well covered up and supposed to be righteous and whatsoever, and then that like, you hear them, you know, <laughs> use the word, uh, like you know, they use the word hell as a form of uh, expression, right? You know, I use the word hell to talk about hell. Right, <laughs> hellfire, right, Jahannam. Really. but you know, like someone said, you know what they did. Yeah, they was, they, and and they are satiza, 
you know, they are, you know, thinking of religion. And you hear that kind of expression, you know, which is basically, it's distasteful. Lah. Right? It's something that, you know, I've heard it in my own ears. You know, you, you mix wrong enough, you will hear these things in your own ears. <laughs> and you're like, do you teach a religion? You know, what kind of, what kind of uh, expression is that? Astaghfirullah. Right? Uh, uh, the one who teaches a religion, right? In and out, in the home, outside the home. Right, with the with friends and without friends, in front of students, in, in front of in front of uh, mm. your your closest uh, companions, you guard your tongue. You're a believer wherever you are. <laughs> you guard your tongue. Right? You don't no matter what, because it shows your heart. It shows your heart. Right? Especially if you someone with, with those who are close to you, and you say it's kind of like you know uh, terrible words. It, it shows that. I mean, how much of the religion is in a person? Right, that you can't, you can't, you can't, you know, remove these things from your vocabulary. You can't think of la hawla wa la quwata illa billah <laughs> when you're upset. Right, you know, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Say that. You know, get, you get pahala. <laughs> you get some reward saying it. Even if you're frustrated. Right, you know, subhanAllah. And this is the this is training. The training of, you know, subhanAllah, when I, when, I, when I hear my teachers, I never hear them say a word, you know, of, of, there is, there is even, there is even, not zikir. <laughs> like everything that's from their mouth is zikir. Everything. When they as as upset as they are, they will say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. And now they will go into some ayat Quran. Ni'mal maula wa ni'mal nasir. And they will continue reading. <laughs> they will go into Quran and thereafter. You know, that's one Allah. They, you will not hear this. But in our zaman, you hear those who are, subhanAllah, they, they say it, and you're like, Ya Allah. This is Sayyidina Ali, he's like, they hear these people, and the people of the book, right, the, the Bani Qurayza, he heard them, right, say, they say these things, and he's like, what's wrong with them? Right, why must they say that? You know, like, like you know, if you know the story of Nabi, Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam, and his brothers, you know, in the surah in Surah Yusuf, you know, when when, when Benjamin was um, was 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 framed that he was a, was a thief, right? And the brothers came and the brothers saw that you know they pulled out from Benjamin's um, thing that he stole. I mean, Yusuf basically placed it there, and the brothers said, "Oh, if he stole, then he had a brother from before who stole." It's kind of things like, like why must they say it? <laughs> like, why are they so foul? That they must make up lies that have no benefit whatsoever. Like the Bani Qurayza right now, they know they're in for it, <laughs> right? And it makes no difference. In fact, it's not a good idea right now to say bad things about the Prophet. He has the he upper hand, right? So, I mean, it's a true bad, bad idea. If you want to suck up a bit, <laughs> you know, you, you try to work your way through. But they are such, so arrogant. Such arrogance, right, in the person, but it shows the 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 ugliness of their character, right? That they can't hold their tongue, you know, and and you know just so they can't hold their tongue. <laughs> so as believers, you know what we we need to, to to pay more attention. You know what does our tongue say? Pay more attention. Right? We are believers, right? Whenever your tongue wants to say something, you know, out of frustration, right? Think the same tongue says the shahada. And the same tongue wants to say the shahada at the point of death. So you think about that. You think about that. And you, so you don't, you, don't, you don't dirty this tongue. The same tongue reads the Quran. The same tongue says slawat. The same tongue. You know, how dare you use the same tongue that slawat touched right, and say something that Allah hates? How, how dare you? <laughs> Subhanallah. You know, think about it that way. And suddenly, you know what? All of these words... Out of your vocabulary, <laughs> they're not going to be. You know, can you imagine if you keep saying all these things and you die saying it? Right. So Subhanallah. <laughs> Think of it that way. Right. So you know, Subhanallah. So he says here, right? Uh, uh, so there's going go forth. They'll be, they'll be scared when they see me, lah. Eh? Please go forth. So he marched to them and was preceded by Usaid bin Hudair, who said, "That O oh, enemies of God." We will not depart from your forts until you die of hunger. But you but you are but like a fox in a hole. That means you are cornered. That's it. You're cornered. Right? The the Bani Quraiza. Right? They said, Oh Ibn Hudair, we are your allies, not the allies of the Khazraj. And they seem frightened. And he said, There is no covenant or treaty between you and me. So Usaid bin Hudair who is a sahaba, right? One of the Sahabi Rasulullah, right? He said that 
And he reached Bani Quraitha. You know, he actually reached first before Rasulullah Sallam. Right? So basically, there were Muslims who went first. And Usaid, Sayyidina Usaid bin, bin Hudayr was one of the first to reach. And he said to them, you know what? You are like a fox in a hole. That's it. Come out and surrender. Right? You know, we, have, we are having you. We, we, have, we have surrounded you. There's no way around this. You have to come out right, and surrender. And they say, oh, you know, you are from the Aus. And we are Bani Quraitha. We have a pact together. Because remember, before some came, like the Jews actually had packs with different tribes of the, of the Ansar. Right? And that was how Bani Nadir right, managed to, 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 you know, to weasel their way out right, of Medina without being executed because they had a pact with the Khazraj. And the leader of the Khazraj was the leader of the Munafiq, right, Abdullah bin Ubay. Right? So when they showed um, you know, uh, uh, treachery against Rasulullah Sallallahu they betrayed Rasulullah Sallam, right? they turned to Abdullah bin Ubay. And Allah went away, went to Rasulullah Sallam and, and, and you know, uh, interceded on their behalf. And therefore, God, you know, God got them to be uh, banished instead of executed. Right? So this, this uh, Quraidha, right, they were allied with the Aus, not the Khazraj. Right? So, he, so that's why he says, here, Oh, Ibn Hudayr, we are your allies. Right? Not the, the allies of the Khazraj. Right? And they were frightened. And Ibn Hudayr said, No, there is no confidence today. We have no, you know, uh, we we have no bond today because you you betrayed our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, when you betray our prophet, there's nothing between us and you. It's gone. Right? That's why later on you will see they actually they actually demanded that Saad bin uh, Muaz uh, decide for them. Because Saad bin Muaz is a, is a leader right, of the Aus, right? So and they thought that the Aus would rule in their favor because they're, they're, they're allies, right? But oh, Saad bin Muaz is a true believer. Right, so when he when he was placed in his hand, he said execution. Right, we're gonna see, you know, later on. Yeah, yeah and he made a dua that Ya yeah, Allah don't take my life until I handle this Bani Qurayza. But he knew. Uh, he knew that they had they had they had betrayed, he knew. Right. So so he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to end his life, right, on two conditions. Until he and he handled Bani Qurayza and if there are no more battles between Quraysh and the Muslims. Right. So and when he made a dua his uh, wound stopped bleeding. It just stopped. And the moment he made his, uh, he made his uh, judgment on the Bani Quraidah, his wound began to bleed again. And then he died. <laughs> and this is the last battle with the Quraysh and, and also the last battle. There was no more after this. Right? So subhanAllah, you know, I mean, Allah SWT preserved him for him to give because he really, you know what, I want to see this. <laughs> Let me, you know, keep me alive. I need to see what, I need to handle these people. <laughs> I see what they did. I need to handle them. Right, so, and he was 38 at that time. He's 38. <laughs> these, are, these are big Sahaba. But they're in their 30s. Don't think they're like 50 or something. They're 38. And he's like you and me. Right, and when he passed away, Allah's throne shook at the death of Sa'ad bin Mu'an. Sayyidina Sa'ad bin Mu'an. You know, so subhanAllah. You know, this is Mishra has stand that these, these are people who are great and they didn't even reach 40. Subhanallah, where are we in our thirties? Getting somewhere, getting there, inshallah. And let we learn about them, alhamdulillah. And when Rasulullah drew close to the force, he called out to a group of, uh, of dignitaries in the loudest voice saying, Answer, O Jews, did Allah humiliate you when bring down upon you his punishment? And he said, O oh, Abu Qasim, you know, calling Rasulullah by his kunya, you know, Abu Qasim, you are never of the ignorant or the foul, or foul mouth. You know, you were always of truth. You know, you knew it, you knew this. So Rasulullah, he camped at a well at Bani Qurayza, right, called Anna, right, and the Muslims followed him in succession. Right, at the time of Asr came in while they were on the way. So some said we will not pray until Bani Qurayza, and some said that we will, uh, you know, as Rasulullah order us even if we miss it, and some say no, we will pray Asr. Right, so therefore, so some of them prayed, didn't pray. Right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reproach them in his book, nor does not blame any of the groups because they were both correct. Right, so there were 3,000 fighters and 60 horsemen who had come to Rasulullah to lay siege on Bani Quraiza. So it's not a, a small thing. Eh? It was all of them went down. Right, 3,000 right, went down and they laid siege on Bani Quraiza for 15 nights. Right, it was said 15 days, 15 nights. So they stayed there for two weeks. This is on top of what just happened at, at, at Khaybar. You see, the, the believers, subhanAllah, the kind of patience they have. Eh? I know. <laughs> it means two weeks they stay siege on Bani Qurayza. Like, it's no joke. Eh? It's really no joke. What, what, this, 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 this is called ghazwa. It's called jihad. You think it's, it's, a, it's a walk in the park? <laughs> you think, that, and the way this, 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 you know, some people out there, 
who speak about jihad is as if the Muslims enjoy going out there and killing people and whatever. You know what? They they want to they want to da'wah. They want to teach. They want to you know do all these things, right? And jihad is basically you know one of the ways to, to stop these people who are creating blocks in the way. Right, so, so two weeks after entire month at the Khandaq, you think this is this is fun? <laughs> right, this is difficult. But of course, they hope in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So their enjoyment is on the side that they hope in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They have hope, right? So, so, uh, uh, so until the siege, was, until the siege exhausted the Jews, and Allah filled their hearts with fear, right, terror. Right, and when they were certain that Prophet Allah was was would, uh, was not about to leave them without fighting them, Kaab bin Asad said to his people, "Oh Jews, so so so, so Kaab bin Asad, who is of the Jews, right? He said, "Oh Jews, verily has that which you see befallen you, and I present you with three options that you may choose whichever you wish." Right. So now, one of you said, "Okay, we have three choices. What do you think?" First, they said, "What are they?" He said. That you follow the man and believe in him. Be, be, be believers. The man being a Sultan That you follow the man and you believe in him. For by God, he has been proven to you that uh, this Ka'ab bin Asad is a. He was the one that became a. Is he the one that said. Uh, no, it's not him. Another one. Right? So, uh, so it, God, he has been proven to you that he is an appointed prophet. And he is the one you find in your book. And verily you know his description. Believing in him will secure your lives, money, children and wives. That means it's so favorable to be and in fact it's wajib on you to believe in him. Because in your book, right? So you you very well know he's a prophet. All the Jews they know so clearly, and also in the Quran, that the that, that the people of the book, uh, those who have been given the book, they know you, they know their own sons. Like they have the, how you see your son, you have no doubt he's your son. Oh, they saw the problem. They have no doubt he's a prophet. And also, said even better than that, because sometimes you don't, know, you don't even know your own son. <laughs> right, you know, as what he hides behind closed doors. Right, but they even know some better than their own sons. They had no doubt he was a prophet. No doubt whatsoever. Right, but it just is arrogance. They refuse to believe in what's so long. So, so he said, you know, you know what? Let's just give in. Believe. Be believers. <laughs> right. We know he's true. We know he's a prophet. Right, so he says, let's be believers. And when you do so, then all will be saved because now you're Muslim. And they can't fight you anymore. Huh? If they became Muslim, they will be because once you become Muslim, all that came before is wiped out. So even if they committed treason before and they were traitors before, now they're becoming Muslim. is is a, 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 a blank slate, right? It's fresh, right? And the, and now they are part of the believers. They're no longer, you know, with with a pact with the believers. They are one of the believers. Right? So this is your first option. Of course, they rejected. <laughs> So they said, we find him in it, right, in our book, but we will never part from the rulings of the Torah or exchange it for another book. That's their excuse. Whereas the Torah's ruling is when you find the last prophet, obey him. That's part of the rulings of the Torah. So Allah says, do you, you know, why do you disbelieve? If, we, if, you, if you claim to hold on to the book, the book said, believe the last prophet. The book said that. Right, so now they say, you know, oh, the rulings of the Torah, we you don't know, another book. He said, right, if if you refuse me this, then come, let's slay our children and women. This is a Jew saying this. You know, we kill our children and women. This is his idea. Right, his idea is that we kill our children and women so we can go out to Muhammad with our swords and, and, and sheath and no burden behind us and fight him until God opens it in us and Muhammad, if we die, we die not leaving our offspring to worry about. And if you are victorious by my life, we shall find women and children anyway. Right? Then they say, are you crazy? <laughs> so his idea is, you know what? We, we, we go and fight. Right? But when you fight, there's, there's a risk of us dying. And when we die, the Muslims will take our wives and children, you know, as hostage, you know, or as prisoners of war. Right? So, you know, to prevent them from being prisoners of war, we kill them now. Stupid idea. Right? <laughs> Stupid idea. Right? So you're wondering, like, seriously? <laughs> you know, the Jews are like, are you serious? What did the Jews say? Like, what you So he knows his idea. You know what? We kill them. Right? So when we fight, they're nothing to lose. 
Because we kill them, <laughs> right? And then when we, if, if, we, if, we, if we die, then they can't claim our kids and, and why? Because we kill them. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> like, why, in the, why in the world did he suggest this? And but his idea is that you know, if we win, we just make more wives and more children. <laughs> You're wondering, what is he thinking? <laughs> right. So they were, they were saying, you are to slay these poor ones. You are to kill our own wives and children. You know, what good is life after them? You know, like, what? And he said, if you refuse me this, then tonight is Saturday Eve, right? That's Sabbath, right? Coming on, right? And perchance Muhammad and his companions will say from us on it, so let us descend and take them by surprise, right? So it's a Sabbath, right? And the, and the Muslims know that we don't fight on Sabbath, so we're going to fight. Because they won't expect us fighting. Uh, see how they're going to just break the Sabbath? <laughs> like, you're like, subhanallah. You're, you're going gonna to break your own law. And they just said that we're not going to exchange our law with the <laughs> laws of the, of the Quran. You know, and they just said it. They just said it. And now they say, you know, let's break the Sabbath. And we fight because the Muslim will not expect us to fight on Sabbath. So we fight on Sabbath. Okay, so, so, you know, and then they said, you know, break the Sabbath and commit in it what no one committed before us. That means the breaking of Sabbath not just to work. We're going to fight. On the Sabbath, oh, that is that is an enormity in the Jewish faith. You don't fight on the Sabbath, right? But it but that that it happened to them. What you know of deformation, right? So 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 in a sense, like so the, they, 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 even that they rejected right, from Kaab bin Asad, you know, saying that are you do you expect us to fight on the Sabbath? Because they all the Jews know very well about the group of people at by the side of the of the sea, you know, who broke the Sabbath and they fished. Right, and they were turned into into pigs and and uh, and, and and apes. Right, they were they were turned into pigs and apes. So they are terrified of that story. <laughs> right, and Allah says the story again in the Quran. You know that those who broke the Sabbath. So He said, you know, they broke fishing, and in fact, they played with it. They put the nest out on Friday and they took it on Sunday. So they were like, technically, it didn't work on Saturday. Technically, you're gonna go out right on Saturday and fight the prophet. That we all know he's a prophet. Hey, we, are, you, are you crazy? <laughs> Do you think Allah will not change us? <laughs> so the Jews have some level of... They didn't believe. They're so confusing, right? Yeah. You're like, they have, it, it's so clear they actually believe. Yeah. It's so clear they know he's a prophet. They know without any doubt he's a prophet. They know it. But they just can't bring themselves to obey an Arab. He's Arab. He's not Jew. It has to be their race. Then they will follow. And even then Allah says in the Quran, you had prophets of your race, okay? <laughs> and you killed them. Right? Because they came with a sharia that they didn't like. You killed Yahya bin Zakaria. Right? So, the Nabi Yahya bin Zakaria. You, you tried to kill Nabi Isa alayhi salam. You know, you have a track record of killing your own prophets. <laughs> right? and, and this last prophet, you tried many times to kill him. You tried many, many times. Right? The, the day of the Medina, from that day onwards, they were, uh, they were throwing black magic at him you know, all the time. Nothing afflicted him. Only eventually, right, you know, one black magic afflicted him in, 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 in a very slight way. But they kept throwing the most powerful of black magic to Rasulullah Islam, you know, to kill him on the spot. They were trying to assassinate him for, for since he came in. Right? So, you know, it's something that Allah said, no, Quran Allah says, you know, you kill your prophets. Right? You, know, you, you fight uh, the, the word of Allah and you kill your prophets. Right? So you see in this, you see the, 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 the character. So Amr bin, so he says, it never was a man amongst you decisive since his mother gave birth to him for a single night. Right? Basically, he said, you know, to the Jews, you know, you all can't decide on anything. But basically, he gave, the, the, the choices, only the first one makes sense. <laughs> right. The other two didn't make sense to the Jews. And the Jews were too arrogant to actually be Muslim. You know, had they wanted to be Muslim, they would have become Muslim before. <laughs> right. So for them, like now, be Muslim. You know, after all that, now, you know. The, and for them, it's like, it's such a big blow. When you're cornered, then you, you give in and you become Muslim. Like for them, it's like, you know, they have, they have an ego. To maintain, right? So I won't give in at this point, even though they know that he is a Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Amar bin Su'ada said to him, O Jews, verily you have signed the treaty of Muhammad and know the terms of that treaty and you would not help an enemy of his against him and, and that you would help him against those who would attack him. You have broken your treaty. Verily I am innocent of your treachery. And if you refuse to fight with him, then remain steadfast in your religion and pay the jizya. I, by God, I do not know if he will accept it or not. They said, we do not accept that the Arabs should have a tax that we should owe them. Death is preferable to that. And he said, I am innocent of what you do. And he left. Right, so Amr bin uh, Su'ada, right, he is one of the uh, upright Jews. So there were basically a group who held on to the Torah. Right, and they actually were from the beginning, they, they were against the breaking of a treaty. Right, they were upright. Huh? No, they, were, they held on to their Jewish faith. <laughs> right, they didn't actually go. Um, there were those who entered Islam right, and those uh, are the, of the believers. Right, uh, uh, there were those, right, and then there were those, like, if I'm not wrong, you know, uh, Sayyidina Abdullah bin uh, Asad, right, one of the Jewish uh, people. Right, if I'm not wrong, like his name, and there, there were a few of them, right, of the of the Jewish, uh, not uh, knowledgeable people, right. So, but then there were those who were like in Badr, there was a Jew who actually went out and fought with the believers, saying that our book says to fight with the prophet, but he maintained his Jewish faith, right. But he fought with Rasulullah and Rasulullah said he's the best of the uh, people of the book. So Allah Alam, you know, he stayed. So there were those who were upright, right? That we were not, we are not treacherous. We are not, you know. And up till today, you find them. You do find them, the Orthodox Jews, right? They're not the Zionists. The Zionists are different, right? And and there are the Orthodox Jews who are against the Zionists and what they do, right? So the, what is going on in Palestine right now in Israel, right? There are Orthodox Jews who are very much against that, saying that is not part of our Torah, and these people are not doing what the Torah says. Uh, it's similar to how the Muslims words will speak against the terrorists who say in the name of Islam. So they also have, you know, like, like they say, this is not what our religion says. And they are Orthodox, Orthodox Jews. Right? And they actually, you can, you can look at them up, you know, they're the Mormons and whatsoever. They have their, 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 their groups and they keep away from society. And they keep very, very pure. Right? Uh, and they are people of the book. Right? They are people of the book. Right? So, so he says here, you know, and, uh, so, so he, he left them. I said the word to Rasulullah Sallam, uh, that they would agree on what was decreed upon Bani Nadir, right? That they might take what the camels could carry, excluding their arms. Rasulullah Sallam refused. So they asked, you know, could we get what Bani Nadir tried to do, right? I mean, what, what they got, to, you know, uh, banishment, and Rasulullah Sallam refused. Because Bani Nadir didn't do as something as severe as Bani Qurayza, right? So Rasulullah refused that. He said the word second time that they had no need for anything, not of wealth or weaponry. This let us leave Medina. And Rasulullah refused, right, but that but that they would accept his verdict. Right, so when they realized it, they sought to contact some of their allies from the Aus. So they were they were going to the Aus, eh? right, they might they might know what would become of them if they submitted themselves to his verdict. They asked Rasulullah to send them Abu Lubaba. And you will see why he him around in the Sira. Right, Abu Lubaba bin uh, Abdul Munzir, right, they might consult with him concerning the affair, for he had been an ally of theirs. Okay, so basically, I'm going to explain this and I'll read further. The Jews right now they don't know what to do. Right, they're they, they basically um, they have been late, they have been siege, they have been uh, siege has been laid on them for two weeks. Right, they they know they have to give up. Their leader comes up to them and say, you know what, be Muslim. They say no. Okay, kill your food children and wife and children and then fight. They're lying to lose. Is it you crazy? <laughs> and then uh, and then last one he said, uh, you know, uh, go and fight on the Sabbath. And they said, We're gonna be changing the monkeys and pigs if we do that. <laughs> right? Then the last people who did that, they did change the monkeys and pigs, so we can't afford that. Right? And so 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 then uh, so they, they sent a word to the Sabbath saying, you know what? There's you know Put on us what you put on Bani Nadir. <laughs> right, let us go. Let us bring our wealth. Right, but we have our weaponry behind. So I said no. <laughs> and then he said, "You see, they seem to think they want, they have the upper hand, yeah. and they don't have the upper hand." <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they are dead. The Muslims have laid siege for fifth, and they are starving in there, and they seem to think they can bargain. 
You know, and the Muslims are like, why are they bargaining? <laughs> right? Do they understand what's going on? Right? And then they ask, you know, okay, let us go and we leave our stuff all behind. And I said, no. Right? You know, you need to the, just, just submit to what... And doesn't say what he's going to do. Right? But he says, that you're not allowed to bargain. You are the ones who betrayed. You are not allowed to bargain. You know, I will dictate what will happen to you. Right? Because we are, the, we, are the, we are the government, basically. So we dictate. Lah. You know, of course, you know, what can you dictate us? Right, so he says, you know what, uh, submit to my verdict. And they were not so sure what was his verdict. Right, so they said about Abu Lubaba. Abu Lubaba, Sayyidina Abu Lubaba, he's a Sahaba. He went there and he, is off, he has allies with the Jews. So when he went there and he saw them in, in their fortresses, he saw them in such a desperate situation, and they were hungry and the children were crying and the wives, the women were, were in a desperate situation, and they were all like, it looked so pitiful. You know, Abu Lubaba went there and he saw how they were. Right, and he basically when he went there, he gestured to them that if you give in or you submit to the verdict of the prophet, he did this. Right? He just did this hand movement. Right, that means execution. So he indicated to them that you're going to get executed. Right. So when he left, it occurred to him, you know, why did I do that? For one thing, I don't know for sure it's going to be execution. Right? No one told me anything. And even if I did know, I didn't ask Islam if I could tell them. Right? I didn't ask his permission. So he saw himself committing a major sin. He just betrayed the Prophet. He saw it as betrayal. So he... No, he's a Sahaba. 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 But he's of the Aus, allied to the Jews. So he saw himself, no, Ya Allah, what did I just do? So he went back to Medina. That's why if you go to Medina, there is this pillar called the Pillar of Tauba. This is from the story of Abu Lubaba. He went back to Medina, he went to this pillar, he tied himself there, and he says, I will not untie myself until Allah forgives me. Right, and he stayed there. And he stayed there for about, you know, uh, a week or something, right? Uh, so he stayed for quite some time. Right, so, so he stayed there, he said, I will not release myself until Allah forgives me. And then uh, Rasulullah heard of what happened, and he went out and he was like, what's going on? You know, and then uh, this Abu Lubaba, he's, he's there. You know, and then, uh, like, and then Rasulullah said that, you know what, said to the Sahaba, had he come to me and sought, asked me to seek forgiveness for him, I would have forgiven him and asked Allah to forgive him. <laughs> right? But because he has done what he has done, now I have no choice but to wait for Wahyu. <laughs> for Allah to reveal something on his account. Because now it's out of my hands. I can't do it. But he, had he just come to me and just told me, even him. <laughs> No, he prayed. So whenever he wants to pray, he will untie himself. He will pray. Oh. Then he will tie himself back. <laughs> no, he prayed. He prayed. He prayed. Right? And, and, and the Sahaba would give him food. Right? He, was, he was basically sustained. Right? So, but basically, uh, that's what he did. Lah. Right? So, so, I'm going to read through the place. Try to see. Right? So, so, he says here, So, so, uh, right? so they asked him Abu Lubaba. They might cause him, cause, cause him their affair. For he had been an ally of theirs. Right, uh, ally of this. So, so some sent him to them, and when they saw him, the men went to him, and the woman and the children came forth with tears in their eyes. And Abu Lubaba felt for them and said to him, Oh, Abu Lubaba, shall we submit to the verdict of Muhammad? And he said, Yes, submit. Right, but he motioned with his hands upon his neck to mean execution. He did that. So he did tell them, Submit to his verdict, but he did this. Right, that means you submit, you're gonna die. Right, done. Right, and then, uh, then Abu Lubaba said, By God, my feet had not moved from their place when I realized I had betrayed Allah and didn't just Allah. So, so I said, By God, I, you know, it says by Allah, I will not look at the face of the Prophet Allah until I repent and accept the repentance to Allah, right? Uh, to God that Allah would know of me. So Abu Lubaba went forth. He then returned to Rasulullah Islam. He tied himself to a pillar in the masjid and said, I shall not move from my place until Allah accepts my repentance for what I have done. And I vow to never set foot in Abu Quraidah again or be seen in the land in which I betrayed Rasulullah Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever. And Allah revealed on, uh, in this case, all oh, you have believed, do not betray Allah and, and Rasulullah Islam or betray your trust while you know. Right? So when Rasulullah was informed of the story, right, after he had been kept waiting, Rasulullah was waiting for Abu Lubaba to come back. And he's at Khaybar. So you see, he is at Khaybar, which is far from Medina. This is Abu Lubaba, saying Abu Lubaba. Right? He, instead of coming back to the Sultan after talking to the Jews, he went to Medina. Right? He actually went all the way to Medina and tied him to the masjid. 
Right, so so Rasul is like, where is this Abu Lubaba? I only he go, and news reached him. The Abu Lubaba said at Medina, and he sent him to the masjid, and he's you know basically you know doing this. And Rasul said, hey, he come to me, I will have some forgiveness for him. But as he has done what he has done, I am not one uh, who will free him from his place until Allah accepts his repentance. Now it's on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. See what he has done, right? And it is narrated that Rasul said to him, Do you presume that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala was ignorant of your hand? When you motion if your neck, right, and he, and he remained for a time aggrieved, right, with him, right. Uh, Nazam was upset lah. He was upset that Abu Lubaba did that, right, uh, with the Jews. So Abu Lubaba remained tied to the trunk for six nights. That was about a week, eh? For six nights, and it is said near twenty nights or some narrations. His wife would come to him for every prayer, untie him to pray, and retie him to the trunk until his hearing was lost, so he could barely hear and he almost lost his eyesight. Right, because it does some, it, it affects the person to be tied up. You know, you, you do go into a state. Allah alam, you become sick and whatsoever. Right, so then he said this is uh, then the the episode of the was revealed to Rasulullah. He was in Um Salama's house and she said, I heard Rasulullah laugh just before dawn and I said, What makes you so joyful, dear Rasulullah? May Allah fill your life full of happiness. May your life full of happiness. This is how the Sahaba would speak to Rasulullah. You know, whenever he would show happiness, they say, May Allah fill you with happiness, Ya Rasulullah. The Sunnah, you know, whenever you say anyone happy, you say, you know, May Allah fill you with happiness in this world and the next world. Especially with children. When you see them laughing, smiling, right? May Allah keep you smiling in this world and the next world. When you see your child, uh, you know, in, in a joyful state, you say it to them. You know, instead of saying, Oh, so cute at the picture. You know, like, you know, Instagram or so. <laughs> no, when you see your child, you know, showing some sort of joy, you say, may Allah keep you happy, my child, in this will end the next. Right? So, make, make a dua when you see happiness in a person. And when you see sadness in a person, then, then you make the dua saying, may your sadness be kept to this world and not in the next world. Right? It kept here. Right? In the next world, no sadness. Right? Inshallah. Right? So, then he says, so I said, shall I give him... The glad tidings, right? Ya Rasulullah. So Abu Lubaba's repentance had been accepted. Shall I give the glad tidings? Ya Rasulullah. He said, yes, if you will. So she rose to the door of her home and said, Abu Lubaba, good news. Allah has accepted your repentance. And we rushed to him to untie him. He said, no, by God. Not until the messenger himself unties him with his own hands. Abu Lubaba, eh? MashaAllah. <laughs> I want Rasulullah himself to untie me. Not anybody. Right, and Rasulullah came out from the, from the morning prayer, passed by him, untied him. And Abu said to him, Ya Rasulullah, as part of my repentance, I shall depart the land of my people, the place wherein I sinned, right, uh, and live near you. It means he used to sit, live near the Khaibah, right, but he, so he was called in, right, because he was near the Jews. So he knew the Jews well, right, so he said, I'm leaving that place and I'm going to go live near the Prophet's mosque. Right, uh, and I give away my property as charity for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they did not allow him to do so and said, Give away one third only. Right, it's the way of some, some of the Sahaba, he will not allow them to give away all of their property. He will only take one third for the sake of their family. Some Sahaba, he allowed it, right, depending on the state of the family, whether the family is able to take it or not. Right, so alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we'll pause there, inshallah. Right, uh, we will. Uh, yeah. So we'll stop there, right? We will continue this, right? I want to go, next time around, we're going to go through with uh, Sa'ad bin Mu'az, right? The entire part, right? Uh, oh, yes, no class. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me just uh, off this.